One common application question that comes up linked to photosynthesis is looking at Calvin's experiment, the apparatus as well, and the results. So in this video, I'm gonna go through with you the apparatus and explain why you need each piece, what the method is, and have a look at the results to help you with those most challenging questions to get that A star. Now, if you haven't already watched my video on the light independent reactions, then I definitely recommend you watch that first because this whole experiment is about proving the light independent reactions so you need to know that first. If you do need more help with your exam technique then definitely check out my new flashcards. These flashcards are for all of the AQA topics, the key marking points to let you know what commonly comes up and to really help you to remember those points and the people that have got them already are loving them. So I'll link that down in the description below but for now let's get into these application questions. So here we have Calvin's apparatus and within this equipment one of the key things you need to know is it's all about the incorporation of a carbon-14 isotope, so a radioactive form of carbon. And that is so that it can easily be traced and tracked throughout the different carbon-containing molecules as it's been absorbed and passed on. So in this way, they were able to visualize the distribution of radioactivity in the plant material. Or in other words, they were able to discover and understand the Calvin cycle. So let's have a look at the equipment. This is like the key pieces of equipment that you might be asked to justify. So the lollipop flask, syringe, rapid action tap, hot methanol or alcohol ethanol, the carbon isotope and the algae. So first of all, we've got a funnel at the top here and that is so that you can add the algae into the flask. The syringe is how you are inserting the radioactive or the isotope form of the carbon into the experiment. And in that way, because all the other um, chambers exposed to the air are closed off, the algae only has access to carbon dioxide in the form of this radioactive isotope. So as the plant is photosynthesizing in the Calvin cycle when carbon dioxide is combining with RUBP, it's combining in that radioactive form of carbon. The hot methanol at the bottom is to denature enzymes. So what happens is this rapid action tap that can open and close really quickly. So you can get samples at really precise moments in time. And that sample drops straight into this hot alcohol. And because that then denatures the enzymes, that means that photosynthesis will stop, all reactions will stop completely. So then you can analyze the quantity of that radioactive carbon, the isotope in all of the different molecules. And that gives you a snapshot of that exact period of time, how much isotope, that carbon isotope was there in each molecule. So the advantages of the flat lollipop flask are first of all, because it is flat on the two sides, you have this larger surface area. And that means more of the algae will be exposed to light and therefore the rate of the light dependent reactions will be faster. And you should therefore see any changes in the light dependent reaction more rapidly as well. The other thing is you can simultaneously be injecting in that carbon dioxide and taking samples at the same time. Now the method itself you wouldn't be expected to remember because this isn't on the spec. As I said, it's a common application question. So it'd probably tell you the method and maybe ask you to explain why they did certain stages. So the first step is the isolation of the chloroplasts and this links really well to topic two where you learn about cell ultracentrifugation. So to isolate the chloroplast, they would have to homogenize a sample of cells. So break open the cells, they would then have to filter the large debris, and then they could centrifuge to isolate out the different pellets and the chloroplasts come to the second pellet. So that's how they could isolate the chloroplasts. Then we've got the incorporation of the carbon-14 isotope. So this is when the carbon is being injected in, in the form of carbon dioxide into the apparatus. And they would need to leave the apparatus for a set period of time under the exact conditions that they want to do the experiment in to allow that carbon dioxide to be fully incorporated into all of those carbon containing compounds in the Calvin cycle. The perfusion stage is referring to the fact that they can then simultaneously continue to inject in that carbon-14 isotope in the form of the carbon dioxide, whilst also taking samples through that rapid action tap. And in that way, they can get multiple samples at precise periods of time and measure the exact quantity of that carbon isotope in all of the different carbon-containing compounds. 
That then leads us on to the measurement of radioactivity and this they would be using auto radiography for and for that that is basically a way to measure the quantity of radioactive substances in each of those carbon containing compounds. Lastly comes the analysis of the results and this is more where the questions come in. So let's have a look at a typical set of results you could get. So you could be shown data like this where we've got the amount of each radioactive substance and we've got when it was all set up in the light and then turning off the lights have exactly the same setup but in the dark. And this is often what they would do so that you get this direct comparison of what happens in the light, what happens in the dark to show that even though it's called the light independent reaction, why there is actually a change in effect when the lights are turned off. So in this particular example, we've got information on GP, glucose and RUBP. Most of the time when I've seen this exam question, they actually only include GP and RUBP, but because this one did have glucose as well, I thought let's put it in and we can explain all three. So the first common thing you might be asked to explain is why there is a high amount of radioactive substance in GP in the light. Now for that, sometimes it's asked as a comparison to RUBP. And the idea here is thinking about how many carbons each of those compounds contains. So GP is a three carbon compound, but you have two GP molecules within that Calvin cycle. You only have one RUBP and that's a five carbon compound. So you're always going to have a higher amount of radioactivity in GP compared to RUBP because it contains more carbons and it is the carbon that is radioactive. The next question, what caused the amount of radioactively labeled glucose to decrease in the dark? So the first thing you've got to remember is in the Calvin cycle, where is the glucose coming from? And in every turn of the Calvin cycle, one of the carbons from the TP goes towards making a hexo sugar such as glucose. So if the glucose is decreasing, that must mean the amount of TP is decreasing. So we need to have a think about why that might be the case. So when it goes dark, that means the light dependent reactions would stop. And that means you won't be getting any reduced NADP or ATP. And those two compounds are required in the Calvin cycle to reduce GP into TP. So that is what is happening here. That GP is not being reduced to form triose phosphate or TP. And therefore, we've got an increase in GP, we'll have a decrease in TP, and because there's a decrease in TP, the amount of glucose has decreased. Now I've actually already partly explained number three. So why did the GP levels rise in the dark? So it's that same idea. In the dark, the light dependent reactions would stop. So there'd be no more ATP or reduced NADP being created. And those two are both needed to reduce GP into TP. Therefore that doesn't happen. So you get a buildup of GP. Finally, why did RUBP levels decrease in the dark. So this happens because the RUBP is still able to combine with the carbon dioxide using the enzyme Rubisco to form GP. But that GP is not being converted into TP and therefore there's no TP available to regenerate RUBP. There's also no ATP which is needed to regenerate the TP into RUBP. So the RUBP is still being used but it's not being regenerated. Now, ultimately, if this went on for long enough in the dark, then you would find the GP levels would also decrease because if you run out of RUBP, then you won't be able to make GP. Hopefully that's helped you feel so much more confident on how you would approach these type of application questions. And if you did get one linked on the Calvin cycle and the apparatus, you would know exactly what to say. Now, if you are still in revision mode and you are ready to learn more, then check out my video on respirometers next because this is the experiment linked to measuring the rate of respiration. If you are new here, then make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my latest videos.